<clears throat> all right so we just talk about packaging here right we can create a package for your class by putting the keyword package right on the top of your program here and we talk about the java doc by using slash asterisk to asterisk here and code with asterisk and slash here and this is the contents of your java doc so we do add the class level we do add the methods level of the methods right and the annotation here returns just telling us what it's going to return and then we go to for each of them now that's why it didn't show because I didn't have two aspects here now what we gonna do we are going to show you again how to I'm gonna save this and show you how to regenerate Java doc project generate Java doc make sure you configure this to this when you did install JDK being Java doc dot alright check the method or the project and the class or the package that you want to generate and location finish and then that should generate for you after this is done you should have the doc folder and um, where you can just right click on the index open with the web browser so that is your java doc okay now and the comments that you provide it should go into your java doc here now we want to talk about we create a class named person a person we want to represent an object of person okay so let's say we're going to create <coughs> a new java project and this is called authentication pretty much your previous assignments right you should have that code ready all right so all right so i'm going to create the authentication that pretty much i'm not going to press on scratch i'm going to pull it from here oh actually I can just I think we have just one right uh, maybe I just copy the code since we already have one class right name part one okay so authentication source new class uh, I think uh, we should we can name authenticate then. I just try to put a logic to use here. Of course, the file name and class name has to be the same, right? So now this is the point that we don't need to use this anymore because we actually have the user. So I try to show you how to first how to how to import this to use just like when you use scanner what you guys need to do import right but scanner happened to exist in your system library right but your edu.nvcc.csc is not existing in there so first we need to create java file so you need to export right click and export it's actually java java file here right so I'm going to name this so like why we need to do this because this is not a jar in here 
I'm going to name nvcc.jar. That makes sense? Because that nvcc.jar is going to have that person, right? The Java that we can use. So I'm going to name nvcc. I put on my jar file folder under F. <clears throat> All right, so now uh, my authentication. Remember, we want to create user. We don't want to create from scratch. We can just import or build path, right? Add the jar here, the external jar, which is your nvcc.jar. There you go, so I have mcc.jar just like those libraries, right? Now, I should be able to reference to my package edu, nvcc, and use person. That makes sense? Just like the same way that when you do scanner, it's happened to be under standard library rt.jar and java.util, right? Package, right? And then you have scanner inside. Just like that, the same principle, right? Now, since you want to use, then let me minimize this back. I need to create my reference libraries, which is to my nvcc.jar here, right? That has this package inside. You can have more. This is just one example. All right, so I should be able to import edu.nvcc. CSC, right? Dot person to use. Correct? And now I can just say create an object name person equals to new person. So what happens if I call this constructor? You may want to read Java doc because you're not the one who created it. Java doc said if you use that, it construct a new person that holds username John Doe. Okay, that's the point of Java Doc. Why you need it? Because when you need to use it, you want to understand. Make sense? Now that means my username password it should should be what John Doe, the correct one, right? If I do it this way, correct? Then I don't really need to use the variables anymore. Make sense? Then, if I want to test this program, I can run it. Oh, but again, if I want to use the variables here, I can actually do person dot what get right user name right and. Password is going to be so I don't want to modify much on that, but I can just say person dot get password. Then I got John Doe here, correct? An account type. <coughs> this is going to be person dot get account type. Now the rest of the code is the same. But the username and password is being set to the person. <coughs> Let's test this code. So username John password Doe. Cal type staff welcome. That's how you link them, right? Now you can always create a new account. If you want to create another account, person, let's say you want to say Michael equals to new person, you pass in Michael, right? Username, password, CSC200, and account type, student. <coughs> right, you can still use the same authentication. But at this point, you may think about create another application to prompt the user to sign up for account. And then you can just create that to store the data, right? And we can create an array of objects. We're going to talk about that. 
like when we talk about an array, which is going to be applied to your assignment next one, right? Then you can create a list of user accounts now, and you can validate through that. Now, at this point, yeah, Michael, of course, if you want to test, you have to change this, right? Because our logic just support that. Which normally, you should make this as an authentication module, as a class, and then you have an application that call this every time by passing in a single method every time, right? So, like, modifying your main here, you should pass in, like, person, username, password and your main is going to be the one who take care of that then you don't have to modify this every time this is just like a function to do authentication